Hey, this is DM Allen. Thanks for joining us once again for another week of awesomeness. Uh, let's just get it started. Last time on Roll with Advantage. Everybody else went to go give dragon parts to the giants. And you see the Kraken siege, sieging the, uh, the keep. And she says, my master demands the pieces of six. Well, it's really simple. Catch me and you can have this. And I take off. Her eyes stop glowing and they become clear. And, uh, and she says, beware of the abolists. And uh, she, she dies at your feet. Sarissa, she says, we need to, we need to kill this thing. What? This, this thing? What thing? The Kraken. And then another just, she, uh, uh, she says, I don't know how long the stronghold's going to last. And there's no way I can get all my people out of here. Real quick. Let's look for the piece of six that Corey had. Okay. Uh, you check her body. And uh, when you check her body, you find... Someone give me two D100 rolls, please. I got Ooh, one of them. I can roll a one and a two. 91. 97. Damn! All right. Shit, we roll Ben good. rolls good. Yeah, uh, and then I want uh, sometimes. <laughs> uh, and then I want another D one hundred. This is for the cash that you find on her. Somebody else want to crack it? Don't let Dan roll it. I'm doing it. Guys, will get five bucks. <laughs> five bucks incoming. Seventy one. Seventy one. Okay, so you find seventy one platinum, and it's big, like sand dollar size. Uh, uh, coins. Uh, this is like pennies for for giants. So each one's about a pound, right? <laughs> sure. That means each one's 50 platinum pieces. Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> 71 plat- platinum in in uh, in total. Um, uh, is it and ten, then, 10 gold makes a piece of platinum? or like, Yeah, what's it's, the... it's pretty metric. So okay. platinum, I think, is 10 gold. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. And then in this bag where you find the platinum, you also find uh, some, like, they're pipes. They've got, like, four pipes, like, wooden pipes in a row, and some of them are cracked. Um, And then uh, you said 97, right, Ben? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You pull out this, like, really long quiver, and it's got, uh, like, this green, it's this deep green quiver with silver markings all around it. Ooh. Can I read any text on it? Does it look like my quiver? I speak uh, Sylvan. I don't know. What is your quiver? Quiver of Alona. Quiver of Alona. Yeah, it looks just like it. Okay. I was like, <laughs> that's what it sounds like. I, I hold it up and I say, look, Kenyon, we're twins. I could have a secondary alcohol carrier. <laughs> and I put it on. Uh, Sarissa says, oh, I know what those are. And she, she points at the pipes. She says, those are pipes of haunting. Ooh, I, I I suck on the ends of the pipes. I'm like, how do these work? <laughs> they don't seem like they're good. <laughs> Is that quiver? Does that require any? No. Yeah, I'm totally wearing the quiver. Okay. No piece of six. Um, no, no piece of six. Darn. And I pass Kyo his ring back, ring of protection. <gasps> Thank you. Now, how strong of swimmers are you? Uh, if it's Sarissa is asking, yeah, <clears throat> I puff my chest out a little bit. The strongest. Uh, I, I don't mean to brag, but uh, I once almost didn't drown in a keg of ale. <laughs> <laughs> and then I shudder. When we found out that Sarissa is missing her piece of six, did we know that Corey had taken it from her, or just that it was missing? It was um, ripped off her neck. It was ripped ripped off her neck by Corey or just I don't unknown. know that uh, I don't know that I said okay. one way or another okay. Sarissa who ripped off your piece of six Corey did okay <laughs> boom <laughs> <laughs> nailed it <laughs> she did mention it before I'm just a plot hole there so 
She d she doesn't have it now. Do you know where she would have what she would have done with it? Not Probably at gave all. it to the Kraken. Quite possibly. I mean, she she turned into that vortex. It wouldn't surprise me if if that's what happened. Okay. Here's what I'm going to pitch. So, our problems currently are we've got a city full of people under attack. <laughs> and we have a missing piece of six. Our pros are we've got two of the pieces of six. I think we should try and lure the Kraken away from the city by letting him know we have them and leaving. Like swimming away? Um. We would not be able to outswim the Kraken. If, we normally have a ship for that. But if, if we could say, let him know, and then teleport away. We, I, we could use the pieces of six as ransom to say, stop attacking the city, go here, and we'll finish this. I pull piece of six out of my bag while he's talking, and I'm like, what's this do? Which Which piece of six do you have? I don't know which piece of six was given there to was me. a wooden Think bowl and I have the bowl you have the bowl you have the shard ah the amber shard so uh she she says um well that the amber shard is said to allow uh a a creature a giant a, I guess a small person like you to uh absorb it and the next willing giant that they touch the the creature has that giant strength. Too bad we don't have time to attune to that. Yeah. <laughs> What's the bowl do? <clears throat> it just holds things. <laughs> Rice, soup, pieces of six. Kenny and it like, holds important things. <laughs> Kenny <and> loudly goes <laughs> and walks behind the bar and opens his portable hole and starts pushing kegs into it. Can't let it go to waste. No. Yeah. She says that bowl is just to hold the pieces of six. It's, it's that... the bowl you have to have for it. It has no other practical power. Uh, uh, we need to act quickly. What? I like the plan of drawing him away. Um, uh, ransom wise, I mean, who's gonna commune? I don't know that the person who communes with him is going to survive. I think I could get away. As I'm immune to being charmed, so. Are you immune <laughs> you to, are? to psychic damage? I I can end a charmed effect on my turn. I'm not worried about brain-controlled. Slar, Slar literally killed storm giants today with nothing but his mind. Awesome. <laughs> I mount the crab that's playing in the fountain. Okay. Shukum. <laughs> I'm ready to rock. Do you I'm... get your axe out? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, yeah, I would allow for that to be a mount. I would be very cool with that. You'd have to give me an am animal handling check. Oh, this is happening. 21. Ooh. Where would we be drawing the kraken to? That's a great question. Per perhaps to the whale bones. They they seem small and unlikely to be heavily populated. Yeah, the whale bones are that'd be a great place. Um uh, that's it's definitely not a place that people go to. They ships get caught in there. It's very craggy. Uh, uh lots of spiky uh, uh islands and stuff. It could make a good defensible position if he's assaulting the, the Isles. You don't happen to have any quick way of transporting us through the water that, you know... I've got orcas. <gasps> that aren't orca team six? No, <laughs> they're not orca team six. <laughs> if, if they can outrun the Kraken, then... Let me think real quick. <laughs> nice cop out, DM. Yeah. yeah. Now, hear me out. I'm just spitballing here, but why don't we fight him in the desert? He probably can't get to the desert. 
Kinian has a flashback of being scared of a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> ah! We're not going to the desert. <laughs> It'd be like a day on the beach. I think I think we can get away if we s- somehow can sneak away. I mean, they're fast, but so is the Kraken. I don't think we're going to gain ground on him. Hear me out. The, the Kraken's looking for, like, humanoids and giants. So what if we, like, ride in the mouths of the whales? They'll just look like a pot of whales. I'm going to give you inspiration for that idea. Whether or not you guys use it, I'm giving you inspiration for that idea. That's a fucking awesome idea. Uh, She's really on point for uh, a nice joke. Really on point for uh, Kyo. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Because <laughs> Pinocchio. Yes. yes. A little bit on the nose. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I think Dan gets inspiration. Are there? Too. Yes. yes. Are there? I'll give you inspiration are as well. Are there Good orcas joke. that have jaws wide enough to fit Tenuviel and Kinian, though? That's what I was going to say. Because we're orcas not small don't sized. Have that big of a mouth. Yeah. They're like three feet. It's, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but their mouth Orcas. was... Yeah, I don't, I don't think it, it'd work. Orcas aside, why don't we utilize our nice teleportory, teleportory conch and just have him meet us there? Because the conch doesn't take us wherever we need it to go. It yeah, but it here. takes us somewhere other than here. I'm not bringing the crack into Waterdeep. What if Rings we... would kill me. What if we were the orcas? Yeah, we can't do that. We can't bring it to Waterdeep. What if we brought it to yeah. 50 miles uh, south whoa, of Waterdeep? Whoa, 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 whoa. That, that won't work, Hold though. on. What? Why not? I'm too tired. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking about polymorphing us, I think. I, I yeah. think... I, I was think thinking of seeming. The smallest of it's you... A, it's a big abuse of it, but... Yeah, it is. <laughs> I think the smallest of you can fit in, in the orca mouths. They're mammals. We're mammals. Doesn't seem appetizing to me. No? No. Okay. So, let's scratch uh, that idea. <laughs> uh, Kyo, are you able to teleport at this point, or are you out of spell slots for that? Uh, I can only do that once a day. Hmm. <sighs> I've got wind walking, but that wouldn't let us travel through water. No? Because wind can't... You'd be bubbles. If you're willing to interpret it that way, then sure. Yeah, I mean, air that starts... Yeah. I'd call it bubbles. Okay. You're not going to have control going forward. You would have to go up and then... Once we get to the surface, then we'd be able to swim or fly away. I'm... I'd be okay with that usage. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> um, we just have to, you know. It takes a minute to transform. Back. It, it, Each it's way. It's instant. No, it's oh, instant it's when you when turn cast. into mist. Mm. It is a minute coming back from mist. It's so that you don't bamf in and bamf out like like okay. uh, Nightcrawler. But you can bamf I, out. I okay. think it's also a minute to transition if you transition back. That's it's, what it's it is. It's the instant. It's instant when you oh. cast Do it. it. F- okay. Sarissa says, "I I like the wind walking idea too. That sounds good. Um, uh, who who of you is of the strongest mind? <laughs> Not you, Kenny. And I'm sorry. You're beautiful and dumb, and that's it. You have strong muscles. Yeah. <laughs> Meta wise, strongest mind would be." Uh, wisdom? Uh, yeah, probably. That might be me, then. Any buffs we can do for that? I mean, bless or... Um, bless is a first level spell. I actually have a way of doing a bless with the help of, um, Tenuvial if she's got a first level spell slot. I do. I also have it as a prayer bead. Because you need someone to concentrate on it. Oh, yeah, good point. I have a ring of spell storing, so I could drop my healing word out of there. And feel a little better, and then hold the bless in there. You see Sarissa, like, thumbing around, uh, uh, like, fidgeting with this, like... For you guys, it's a rod, but for her, it's just a a small, like, almost toothpick-sized trinket. And, um, and she says, um, oh, okay, okay. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we can draw him away. If it doesn't work, um, we'll have to f- figure something out. So the plan is get up close to him, hope that we can 
communicate to the Kraken and tell it that we're going to be at the whale bones with some pieces of six. I don't even think you need to get close. He, he was able to hurt people that he was able to see uh, while he was outside. Storm giants of mine were dying inside. Oh, okay. I ride over to the glass on top of my crab mount. Yep. Just like, and I'm looking at the kraken. And it's like, it's, you see like, you see this black blob out in the, in the sea. And it's like undulating faster and faster and faster towards you. And, uh, and it smashes its entire body, digging in, uh, its tentacles into the, into the structure. And, and you feel like the shudder come across uh, the the maelstrom, and it starts like pulling chunks and pieces away from from the structure, and you're starting to see like he's starting to open it up almost like an egg, like uh, you can see some air bubbles coming up out of the cracks and stuff like that. Like he zoomed over to my window. No, no, no. Just okay. you're looking down. So imagine like you're in a spire, yeah. looking down where like a portcullis is. And and like people are attacking the portcullis. It's it's same concept. He's he's been attacking this one spot, trying to break it away, almost like a an eggshell. I turn back to the the party and I'm like, he's getting inside. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm DM Allen. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Season 2, Episode 45 of Roll with Advantage. Thank you so much for being a listener. We really, really appreciate it. And we're very happy that you've decided to come and join our community. If you want to join in more, go check us out on Twitter at DM's Table or on Facebook at The DM's Table. We've got a ton of cool people out there and it's a great community to get into. So go check it out. All right. I don't have any community updates for you this week. So I'm going to throw it right over to Adam for this week's sponsor. Hey guys, the name of the game is Audible, Amazon's audiobook platform. Audible has hundreds of thousands of books for you to listen to, and we want to give you one for free. Go to audibletrial.com slash RWA and pick your first book out for free. What should your first book be? I suggest The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams and narrated by Stephen Fry. The Hitchhiker's Guide is a comedic take on intergalactic affairs following Arthur Dent after the Earth is demolished to make way for a space highway. That's right, even aliens have eminent domain. So grab your towels and stick out your thumb because this is one ride you won't want to miss. All right, go check that book out. Now I want to talk about Incompetech.com. Incompetech is a phenomenal website we have been using them since the start of the show and what's so great about them is that they've got amazing musical scores they've got really good background music really good music for listening and prepping to it is really really great to be able to play this music and see all of your players start to become their characters they really get immersed that way and it just works out great for everyone So go check them out. That's incompetech.com. All right. That's all I've got for you this week. We're going to get right back to the show. I'll see you out on the internet, guys. Bye. How do you want to get his attention? Do you have any, any like simple spells? Maybe, maybe you can just get his attention that way. I could cast some blinky lights. Like a dance party? Um... I don't, I don't know about you guys, but generally blinky lights are very noticeable and I start universal tapping form on the glass. Hey, look at me. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. All right. So describe what you're doing. Casting light. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like a, a yellow light that's just strobing out. Sure. Okay. And um, I, I make his, his light that strobes have magical fireworks pop off it. Okay. Look, Bon, your spell's working better. <laughs> and Kenyon, are you, like, at the window trying to figure out what's going on? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. So uh, this light is going off, and um, uh, you see the Kraken is still, like, peeling the structure away. And you see one of another, like, black blob out in the ocean uh, starting to, like, list its way towards you. The, the Kraken starts, like, it turns to swim backwards, and as it's turning... Uh, it is. It notices the light, and uh, uh, it, its concentration on what it was doing seems to have been broken. And it looks up at you, Kenyon. I need you to make a wisdom save. Hey guys, there's an ugly thing looking at me. That's a four. A four. Inspiration. But I want to hurt you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you too. <laughs> That's a seven. Uh, um, well, we tried. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, Slar makes a a connection with your mind once more, and uh, uh, you hear coming from somewhere like in the center of your ears, uh, like like where your nose would be, but in the center of your head. Um, uh, you hear. I'm coming for you. I say it out loud, like echoing okay. it. All right. Thinking that I'm taunting him at this point. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. He sees us. Um, that sounds bad. We should probably go. Kenyon, tell him the plan. Hey, stupid. I've got your piece of six. We'll meet you at the... The whaley bones. Um, it starts. It starts like swimming towards you, um, uh, with uh, all its speed. Um, so it's it's swimming towards you, um, uh, at top speed. Ten. It's time to go. Yep. Bubbles. I use my prayer beads and cast wind walking. Okay. Um. Include the crab. And <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag save the crab. <laughs> I cast it on all of the <clears throat> living creatures I see around me, including Sarissa and the crab. What the last thing your uh, your solid eyes see uh, is, uh, Kenny, and you're looking out the window, and the kraken uh, is swimming at you, its mouth agape. And uh, it pierces uh, this glass. It, it first cracks, and then the water pressure explodes inward. Uh, you see tentacles like reach into the um, into Maelstrom, up into this area, and it starts like pulling it away. But it's futile because uh, uh, because you have turned into uh, gaseous form, uh, and you execute your plan. I get um, the bends for going up too quickly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you are the Benz. Because <laughs> <laughs> all my blood turns into gas. No. That's right. <clears throat> uh, so, so you all become this big bubble that uh, that uh, explodes out the window as, as the air pressure in here is replaced with water from outside. Um, uh, the, the dead body in the room, uh, the alcohol that wasn't uh, that wasn't grabbed. <laughs> the it was a small yeah, portion yeah, of what yeah. was there, and I'm sure you got most of it. The the jazz parlor um, are all flooded. You see, like this burst of air out the window, and you all are floating up through the through the big bubble. Um, after a couple minutes, you reach the surface, and uh, you start heading east, uh, northeast. It's a hundred mile journey to to whale bones. Um, Ooh, and we have eight hours. How fast yeah. can we fly? Yeah, we've got eight 600 hours. Six hundred a second or something six like seconds, that. Something it's like that. Three hundred feet flying speed. You you all start traveling towards whale bones um, at like hundred and forty miles per hour. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's fine then. At 140 you did an math. hour? Yeah. Okay, okay. cool. Good. I yeah, was going to ask somebody. We did. Yeah. <laughs> so, so a little under an hour, you make it to Whale Bones. And uh, it, is, it is currently storming uh, heavily out here. Um, 
uh, you see, you see these, uh, these, like, jutting teeth, like, uh, islands coming out from, uh, from the ocean. You see some most unfortunate boats, uh, have met their end in this area. You only see, like, a little bit of the top bits where the crow's nests are, or, uh, they're laying over on their side or cap, uh, capsized and upside down um amateurs so what kind of a you know pirate would run his ship aground i know right <laughs> and and as as you're like flying you uh you see these 10 circular uh rings all locked uh like almost like chain meal almost uh in a ring formation um on these boats there it's a symbol and uh so it's a symbol around a circle and around that circle is 10 10 rings that are uh like locked in um look familiar kinian <laughs> might know what you're talking about <laughs> um uh kinian they definitely look like uh the symbol of your uh shipping company quote unquote yes <laughs> uh you you know this area actually really well kinian um uh this is a run aground here many a time yeah <laughs> Uh, not necessarily, but, uh, you, you definitely have mapped this area out. Um, when they said whale bones, uh, uh, you, you were probably pretty excited because, uh, you know it so, so well. Uh, you know how to navigate it. In fact, you used it a lot to get away from, uh, to get away from ships from Waterdeep and places like that where, where they might have been chasing you down. And anyways, uh, you all have quite some time uh, to to plan. I take Sarissa aside and ask her if I can take her energy, her strength. In a non-weird way, of course. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, she's, if if you think we have time, yes. Um, uh, absolutely. Uh, I'd be willing. Okay. I begin to attune. Attune. Okay. To um, the stone. Yeah. Short rest. For yeah. sure. Short rest. Yeah. So how how long? I think I carried a one. So six hundred times ten gets it to minutes. Times sixty divided by five thousand two hundred eighty. I have it at sixty-eight. Yep, sixty-eight miles an hour. Oh, 16. okay. So a little over two mile or two hours, it take or a little under two hours is what it takes you to get to whale bones. Ah, um, short rest. So what? <laughs> so what that means for the kraken is it's gonna take eight hours. It can go about thirteen miles an hour. Yeah. Is what I okay. figured. So. Which uh, divided by a hundred is how many hours? Oh, well, at least or a hundred divided by thirteen is how many hours? Oh. It was like 13.6, so... Whatever. Seven? Seven hours? Okay, you could get a long rest. Oh, fuck yeah. Yes. But, I mean, it's like, you guys hit the ground, you you Pass can... fuck out. Yeah, well, uh, so it's light duty, so you guys can plan during this time, and then take a nap uh, using shifts, and then I it would right away i have my broom take me up to a safe distance then i hang my hammock and go to sleep okay so you hang your <laughs> hammock on on uh uh your very uh very no known area and that's one of the ships that are turned over no no i hang it on the broom oh oh i thought you were gonna i thought you were hanging it in one of the crow's nests you you click the tesla autopilot and uh <laughs> yep you get pulled over, yeah, because it's not legal. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you, uh, you are hammocking it out. Uh, so, Kinian's hoping that his his long rest is also a hard rest with Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> that rest that might that might be a check of, of some sort. You're all out of <laughs> potions of potions of giant size, though. Give me your strength. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna gain anything by sharing her strength? Yes, a little bit. You've All got right. what? Frost strength, strength right now, or fire? Giant? Fire. 
I could gain another two strength. All right, so give me a second because uh, you guys did what all good players do and completely throw off all your plans. Yeah, you're welcome. Yep, <laughs> I knew it was it was a very and good actually potential. So I'm going to reattune to my ring of protection. Okay, it, I've missed it. I got caught that from the last session, that's so why I gave it back to you. <laughs> so, so I, I take off my hat of disguise. I'm re-stealing the alchemy jug, though. <laughs> I take off my hat of disguise and put on my hat that looks exactly like my hat of disguise. Your disguised hat of yeah. disguise? I'm a disguise hat. Yeah. Looking at the orca shadows, I, I could totally fit in the mouth of one of those. Uh, those are giant sharks. I could totally fit in the mouth of one of those. All right, all right, all right. You all might right. not yeah. come back out, though. <laughs> so oh, he'll come back out. <laughs> okay, so Manette, give me a uh, strategic uh, intelligence uh, roll. So it would probably be just intelligence plus uh, it'll be history because I'm sure you've studied it in the past. Maybe not your favorite subject, but yeah. 18. 18. Um, so, uh, out of all of these, uh, craggy islands, uh, you find the perfect kill box, uh, one that will allow for the, the, uh, Kraken to make its way into the area, um, and you can easily draw him in, um, and there are, uh, flat, uh, flat enough crags here that uh, you could stand on top of them to pose some sort of fight. Um, so that's uh, that's the best that the, the area has to offer for you. Uh, Sarissa says, how are we going to lure him into this, what'd you call it, kill box? What if we made a big sign and just had an arrow saying pieces of six here <laughs> and then put like a big rock next a, to it? A blinky like... A uh, uh, neon sign just. <laughs> yeah. burm, 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 burm. Uh, I could make the sign with prestidigitation digit on the rock. Okay, okay, that's an option. Well, I have an idea. I have 330 feet of rope. We could lower somebody into the water with the rope and then pull them up real quick when the, when the kraken gets to you. We'd probably, Not have, it. <laughs> we'd probably have to choose the lightest amongst all of us. I look up at Sarissa. Yep. Like looking absolutely sober on top of my amazing mount. Are you feeling okay? You look a little off. Like He's coming right for us. Yeah. I feel him. He's in my head. Can you connect to him? You want to try? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Give me a wisdom insight, please. That's a... Really? <laughs> nice. <laughs> So, uh, 19? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a plus one wisdom. All right. Nice. Okay. <laughs> um, so, you you do something that you only do in battle, and that is focus. And uh, you focus actually to the center of your head where that voice was coming from. And as you're focusing, you start breathing really heavy. And... And uh, you feel your uh, heart pounding. Uh, uh, you feel your tentacle arms moving and pushing uh, you through the through the water. And you see just ocean in front of you. Um, uh, looking around, uh, using your your eyes, you see that nothing is with you. Um, uh, the abolis. Uh, are not around they couldn't keep pace uh, and you feel this rage this hungering rage um, uh, and then uh, the connection is severed man I missed my chance to tell him that the gods rejected him and I'll <laughs> do the same <laughs> Ooh, you can do that yeah so that's your parting words yeah Okay. And then I break the connection, basically, when I say yeah, that. Yeah, you slam down the phone. Before he <laughs> nukes my brain. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, you sever the connection, uh, uh, not before feeling like a flash of fury. Um, and uh, 
and then you come back and you see your friends standing around you. Um, uh, you have a lot of sweat pouring off of you. Um, uh, your arms feel sore uh, from swimming. He's totally coming. He wants to kill me. Now, now hold on. I know you guys dismiss this idea, but I kind of like Keo's idea if if Kenny ends up for it. What? We'll just we'll dangle you like a a fish hook in the water. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I've heard tale of you in battle. You seem like you need to get close and and she's like eyeing the the kill box from one crag to another. Uh, you're looking at 115 feet, roughly. We'll call it a 60-foot jaunt to the center of the of the kill box, which is what makes it so nice. Um, uh, so you guys can cast spells there, but swimming there is probably going to be tough for you. Sounds sounds like a good plan. Well, unless you unless you attune, then you'll be able to swim. What? Yeah, yeah, you take my strength. Let's do this. How do you guys want to do this, then? Uh, uh, describe how you're setting up the trap, and then uh, you guys can do a long rest, and we'll start the battle. I want to be up as far away from the water as I can get. Okay. Um, Presumably there's some manner yes. of... High cliff. Yep. The highest cliff is going to be in the top right crag. Well, how high up do you need to be? I've got a thousand foot range. I want to be as close to that limit as I can <laughs> be. <laughs> now, so I, um... It's I the fucking Kraken, man. <laughs> I, um... I kind of pat my broom and I'm like, Listen here, broom. You be good. You take care of... Take care of Manette, and you come back to me after this. You okay. promise? You and promise. the broom the broom head just kind of, like, nods yes, and then it does, like, the whole, uh, the whole alive broom thing, and it splits its broom legs and, like, walks over to Manette instead of fly. <laughs> uh, and then Manette, the broom just kind of, like, goes rigid and then falls towards you. I catch it out of respect. <laughs> yes. Trust fall. <laughs> right, I say, right. Minette, stay over land, please. <laughs> I uh, try to put the moves on Sarissa. At the same time, uh, you know, after that, Kinian's thoughts are to uh, repurpose some of the siege weaponry from the, the ships within the whale's bones. Okay. And post them up on the, the island tops facing inward in the kill box for people to interact with. Okay. Um, uh, give me a, uh, a investigation, please. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, Manette might be able to assist, or somebody else might be able to assist also. Assist with? Uh, investigating, finding siege weaponry. Uh, what's, what's the weather like? Raining hard. Does a 31 assist? <laughs> Holy balls, yes. Got a plus 15. <laughs> okay. I don't. Uh, so, so Kinian, what you're doing is is uh, you describe what, what you're looking for in the common siege weaponry that you've found on, or that you've had on your ships and you've found on other ships. Um, and Minette's circling like an eagle. Uh, and he kind of just uh, starts circling where you need to be to get the siege weaponry. Uh, you collect 20 uh, harpoons for uh, ballista. You also get one flaming uh, catapult and two ballistas. The flaming catapult has five shots, uh, and uh, uh, the, the shots will actually ignite when the catapult is fired. So it's nothing that you guys need to light by yourselves. I think that's all you're going to be able to find is, is just that. So three siege weapons. Uh, so you start spending the time you have, um, uh, and Sarissa's going to assist uh, setting these siege weapons up. 
mm -hmm. uh, so that they are pointed towards the kill box. Uh, she says, I wish we had more time. We could, like, camouflage these, but I just, I don't think we have enough time. Um, so what does Bon want to do during this time? Bon cracks out his protected book. Okay. And he's going to read it. And he's going to try and concentrate on thinking about the Kraken, hoping that his ancestral protected might have insight into fighting the Kraken from war's past. Okay. Uh, give me a wisdom check uh, with proficiency. Um, and uh, this is just to see if you can maintain a meditation uh, concentration well under these kind of stresses. Uh, 24, Bob. <laughs> um, so you you sit down on one of these crags. Uh, do you choose a particular crag? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably pick one kind of away from the hustle and bustle of everybody else. Okay, so I'll put you on the crag that Minette's on, the really tall one. All right. Um, uh, so you're up on this crag, you're cross-legged, um, uh, and your, your palms are, uh, are towards your stomach, um, uh, to help unlock that chakra. And, uh, you are, uh, focusing inward and you start to feel, uh, some communication with your deva. You reach out to her and you ask her what? <laughs> um, I say, we're about to face down with the Kraken, trying to prevent him from reaching his goal of becoming a godlike creature. Do you have any insight as to how we can defeat the Kraken? She says, to defeat the foe that was once friends. You must use attacks that are blessed with magic. Trying to scare this monster or paralyze it will be ineffective. Sklar Krethel was the crown jewel of Lathander's might when we stood with the gods. Beware of his spells. And uh, you feel this reaching out into your brain. Um, and... You feel imbued with radiant light. Uh, you are effectively blessed. Um, so bless effect 1d4 for save and attack, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes. Okay, okay. cool. Excellent. Uh, and that will uh, that will be for 24 hours. Jeez, that's yes. nice. Yes. So, Kyo, what are you doing for for setting up then? Um, so, we we know when the Kraken's going to show up, roughly. Yeah. So, I, I have a couple spells that I'm going to have ready. Okay. First, I'm going to have Crown of Stars up from okay, Kepito's what's that book. Do? You gave it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, months ago. <laughs> yeah, months and months ago. Kyo's like, I, I'm a real prince, and... I must protect my people. And um, a crown forms by his head with um, seven points with, with shooting stars. And it, the light gets real bright and Kyo kind of winces under it. And that just sits there. And then I prepare mental prison. Ooh, okay. For But I, I get ready to cast it when I first see the um, Kraken. Okay, so this is the day of preparation yeah. kind of thing? Okay. Yeah. All right. How long does uh, how long does the crown last? <laughs> it lasts an hour, so I, I cast okay. it like, like fifteen minutes before. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Before I think it's going to be there, and before that, I was just you know chilling, chilling. Okay. Actually, and I I take out my deck of cards. Yep. And I play all the cards. Your deck of many things, uh, the, or the, the, the uh, illusions. Deck of illusion. You play all of them. I make a forest of illusionary. To hide in. Oh, okay. Uh, what what 
uh, crag do you want to be on? You want to be on, like, the southwestern crag? I'm going to actually be up on that, that big one. Okay, with everybody where, else? Where everyone else is. And that way, the Kraken <laughs> won't know who the real people are. Okay. We're going to hide in plain sight. Okay. All right. Uh, and there's all sorts of wild things in there. So. Yeah, there is. There is. Um, okay. So that's going to take a fair amount of time, just you know, yep. spacing them out and making it look cool. Nice. So it'll probably take longer than it needs to. Putting them under pebbles so they don't blow away in the wind. Like a Keo army. Um, so, uh, Tin, what do you want to do in preparation? Okay. My understanding is that from what Tin learned in her research, mm-hmm. Slarkrethel, like Bon was just told, was kind of like Lithander controlled him. Yes, uh, Slark Krethel was created by Lithander. Yeah. Yes. But then he went rogue? Uh, he was tossed away. So, okay. uh, Lithander, after the, after the Chaos Wars, mm-hmm. uh, Lithander uh, walked away from, from this plane of existence and uh, left his siege monster behind. Uh, the idea being that uh, Slark Krethel now had idle hands and hated Lithander for it. He was created for one thing, and that one thing is now completed. Uh, so, and then from what you learned from the uh, from Acerax, uh, uh dungeon forever ago, uh, north of Everland, uh, you learned that Slark Rethel started to hate him so much that he wanted to become a god to kill Lathander. Okay. So yeah, that's that's what I thought. Just wanted to confirm. Yep. Um Tin is just going to kind of meditate and try to like pray to Lathander for okay. guidance. Alright. Um uh do you want to take a position with any of these siege weapon uh that Kinian has laid out. Mm, the flaming catapult works on its own, you said? Like, we don't need to use... The flame part works on its own. Oh, the someone flame has part. to. Someone has to actually run it, though. I guess I'll go near the flaming catapult. I don't know if I'd be the one best suited to use it or not, but... Okay. Uh, so, where do you want to set up the siege weapons, then, Kinian? You want to do uh, the three shorter ones, and then the the taller crag is where the melee units are going to be? Or where do you want to place these siege weapons? Uh, I figured, yeah, like one on each island. Okay. But, I mean, it's not ideal to have the cleric on an island separate from everyone else. Yeah, I was right. going to say, if it's going to be separate, then I'll just stay with everyone. Okay. So maybe put the catapult with, with us. us. Okay. So we have an opportunity. We can shenanigans. shenanigans. Okay, cool. That's legit. Okay, so um, how the battlefield is looking is there are four crags, um, one in each corner of the of the uh, rows. So one in the northeast, one in the southeast, uh, southwest, and northwest. Um, uh, All of you are positioning yourselves on the northeast crag, and um, uh, that is where the flaming catapult is. Uh, uh, Currently, there there are ballistas locked and loaded and set up on other crags. Uh, nobody is manning them at the moment. Uh, do you want Sarissa to take one of those positions? Is she in a weakened state? Uh, she'll be fine in the morning. I mean, she's she's everyone, not looking bad. Gets a full rest. Yeah. Yeah. She could probably take the one south of us, and then she's not too far away. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Like I'm, I'm seeing in my mind of. Basically, from like a out of character context, that uh, if I were to get flung, I'd probably try to ride a ballista back to the kraken. Right, right. Because okay. reasons. Yep. 
because that's how ballista. Yes. And if you get flung, <laughs> you Kinian delivery systems. You'd probably yes. get flung towards the southwest island if you got flung. Yeah. Any last minute adjustments to this plan? Can you remove the beard off Sarissa? Because now I'm not into her. I I can't. <laughs> um, in fact, like like. <laughs> <laughs> like dwarves, this is no, no. I'm not making that. Yeah, cannon. she she got um, <laughs> she got a she got uh, strength, which is his beard growth <laughs> ability. Uh, um, any any final adjustments? I start the battle invisible with with my ring. I don't think we it. have yet said that you've slept with Sarissa. Yeah, not yet. It's also, if you think she's still a maiden, you got another thing coming. <laughs> well, considering the size difference, she she'd probably still she, be a maiden. You don't know. You don't know who she is. She <laughs> might not be promiscuous. She might be promiscuous. We don't know. It's her choice. That's right. All right. Are we doing a percentage die for, like, uh, uh, we're saving your life? What? We're saving your life. Kinian finally gets his way with the princess. Um, so or is that uh, post battle type thing? This then she is, dies. <laughs> or like, yeah, like you guys both nearly died, and so. I think. Uh, the I adrenaline think adrenaline and emotions running high. So what? What would you say to her to try and woo her? I think like here's like the terrible, inappropriate pirate Kinian thing. Okay. Like when I touch her to take her strength willingly mm -hmm. that's when Kenny would lay on the guile essentially okay basically just saying the end is near you know how I feel about you type of shenanigans okay um uh give me a charisma oh god persuasion ability. yeah persuasion look at the die <laughs> nice crits when it matters so what does that get you <laughs> yeah so what's your score that's a 19 Ni <laughs> <laughs> I made the joke too soon yes. alright um, she kneels down to you like a toddler <laughs> Damn it. oh that's and, sexy <laughs> and yes uh, she says she says Kenyon I I feel the same way for you I don't know how this is going to work, but uh, if we make it out, I promise I will uh, I will do my best to find my mother's potion recipe. Yes. And and then we will be wed. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> no. And Kenyon's eyes get real big. It, well, Whoa. <laughs> anyone have enlarge and reduce? Chick. You can enlarge one, reduce the other, feed in the middle. <laughs> you definitely feel uh, almost creeped out. She's not She's not desperate, but she is madly in love with you. She is. I want to make that clear, though. She's not desperate. She just feels very strongly. Um, it is the day of battle. Um, you have hit the seven-hour mark. And uh, you all have taken up your positions. Minette, you're floating somewhere in the air far from the battlefield with your gun trained uh, on where you hope for Sklarkrethel to come from. Um, uh, Sarissa, Sarissa comes to you, Kinian, and she pulls out another, like, gob size of of uh, uh, gillyweed and and she says are you still gonna be bait heck yeah she hands you the gillyweed and uh, she ties up a rope to you this is like an insanely long rope uh, probably 200 foot long rope and uh, she Let's is see. going to run the rope from from you, which will be in the center of the kill box, all the way out to, or is that where you want to be? Do you want to be outside of the crags, pulled into the kill box? Yeah, I want to be right in the middle. Do you want to end in the middle, or do you want to start in the middle? That's my question. 
Because she says, she says she can put you out in front of the crags where Slar should be coming from. And when he comes in, she can pull as hard as she can to draw you into the center and hopefully Slar Crethel at the same time. Okay. She can reel me in. Yeah. Just like you reeled in her heart. Yes. Oh, yeah. You do have an option here. You can say no to this. Um, I would actually want to start alone on the southwest island with a ballista. Okay. Okay. We can do that. So, uh, uh, you are going to start on the southwest island with the loaded ballista. Um, uh, she is going to start on the southeast island with the other loaded ballista and... Uh, when the seventh hour comes, she looks over at you nervously, and she just kind of gives you a curt head nod. Uh, she, she's holding, she's not taking the ballista off the mount, and for her, this is like a small crossbow, a light crossbow, essentially. Yeah, so <laughs> she's just, she's like a toy trying to point it without breaking it. Um, uh, the rest of you are on the tallest crag on the northeast side of the kill box. And uh, you are all hiding in this forest of illusions. Um, uh, Tin, what are what are you doing? Where, where are you positioned? Are you uh, launching? Or I guess the better question is, who's, who, if any, is launching the catapult? Um, since it has a range of 300 feet... Um, and my farthest spell range, I think, is 150 or 120. Um, I will definitely use it for at least one. Sure. Maybe. At the start, at least. Yeah. Okay. When it's, when yeah. it's like within 280, 300 feet. Okay. Okay. That's how I kind of imagine the, the yeah. thing being used. So that makes so sense. So let's see. How far is it from the edge of the island to the center? Like one? 60 feet. 60 feet? Oh, yep. okay. Well, to make it easy, because uh, we're not going to use too much footage, The uh, from the center of any island to the center of the kill box is 60 feet. So if you're on an island, it's a, the the guy's going to be roughly 60 feet away from you. Okay. That works? Yep. Then I don't have to worry. For oh. anybody manning a ballista, it's plus 6 to hit and does 3d10. At a range of 120. Yep. And just for DM's knowledge, there are two other illusionary keos. Okay. In the in the forest of Ill excellent illusions. Kinian drinks a potion and mutters to himself, "I'm my own hero." <laughs> potion, right. potion of heroism. Okay. Bond walks up to the edge of the crag, and he's got the sword out. I make it glow, and I just, like, flip it and point it down and stand there waiting. Okay, like both hands on the on the pommel. Yeah. Uh, just waiting uh, for, for war. Yeah. You all stand uh, ready, and when you, when you look out on the ocean, you see it's... Uh, the waves are still really choppy. It's raining, uh, thundering. Uh, uh, there's lightning out in the distance. Uh, you you stand for 10, 15 minutes, and n nobody shows up. An hour passes. No! <laughs> um, uh, ju, 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 ju. And still, still nobody shows up. Um, um, can I... How does... Crying work. Seventh level spell slot for nothing. No, it's yeah, not. Yeah, not to shit on you. <laughs> Sorry. Kinian did just tell him you guys were getting ready, so. Uh, it is the eighth hour. Uh, uh, he seems to be icing the pitcher, essentially. Um, and the ninth hour shows, and you see this this ripple move through the through the ocean against the the beating waves and um uh you start to see like this really dark spot in the ocean um is there anything anybody wants to do at this moment is it dark or is it 
it's it's not like nighttime it's it's just super overcasty from the storm uh so oh, it is weather. it's like dark gray you don't have direct light that's that's what i'm saying if that affects your choice um uh it moves its way uh up towards the crags uh and it is slowly making its way in and then it stops short of the crags everybody roll initiative please uh, oh geez the kraken finder roll uh, three Alan? and a two <laughs> did you get another one all right i had 10 on was it sunday i played yeah i yeah, had 10 crits that. in one session that's ridiculous i'm at three already <laughs> Fucking cheater dice. <laughs> I, can I think I've maybe had 10 crits. <laughs> in your life? <laughs> no, not in my life. Maybe in 5th edition. But I changed no. dice. <laughs> These aren't the dice I was using before. These are better. Well, we proved that with the game science dice. It's it's not the dice, it's the person. Uh, so, uh, Slark is at a... Let's see, he's got... Pretty good everything else. Not bad, though. Kenny, and what do you got? 22. Uh, 10. Uh, 14. 14. Bon. 6. 6. Minette. 17. Oof. 17. Kiel. 13. 13. Let's see. Sarissa has a uh, dex mod of 2, so 14. Her. All right. So, DM, who goes no, first? Uh, it, Kraken it, or Minette? Minette goes first because he's a person. So, Kinian, you see this dark mass, and it seems to be waiting just outside of of this area. It hasn't surfaced. What do you want to do? Uh, so, it's dim light right now? Uh, yeah. I grabbed the edges of my cloak. And I fly to the center. Okay. Uh, I stay. I mean, I've got about forty feet of movement. I fly about ten feet off the water. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically, I'm I'm there with my arms on my cloak, my axe on my back, essentially like in the quiver, and I'd hold my action for uh, if I feel I'm about to be hit by something to rage. Okay. Sounds good. All right, so so you fl- fly over and you release your cape and just sploosh into the water, like. No, I'm gonna fly. Oh, you're flying. Like, okay, just hover so you're up there. Okay. Which I'll let go if I feel I'm about to be attacked. Okay, sounds good. And rage. As you're flying over, you start to feel like the area around you become really like, like tingly, and you start to smell ozone. Uh, you're, you can take your action if you'd like. Uh, you feel danger. Like, your your spidey senses are tingling. Uh, I look back towards Sarissa and frown. Uh, when you look back, she is smiling greatly. Uh, uh, as if she's welcome, welcoming the war. All right. So you rage. Do you let go and splash down? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you rage, you let go, uh, splashing into the water, and, uh, uh, Sklar Krethel uses two of his legendary actions, uh, to cast a lightning storm at you. Uh, I need you to make a dexterity throw at advantage because you are effectively falling out of the way. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, that is not gonna do it. Didn't Kinian's parents tell him not to go swimming in the lightning storm? <laughs> um, uh, Kinian, the ozone uh, smell starts growing greater, and then you start to, uh, you you get a flash of light, and your senses are are now shocked with this this loud noise. Everybody around you, you hear the the cacophonous boom as it strikes Kinian for uh, uh, twenty two points of lightning damage. Uh, and you guys see like Kenyan's smoking body sploosh into the into the water just after. 
Hey, thank you so much for listening. Uh, What a fantastic episode. We cannot wait for next week's episode. Uh, We hope you stick around to find out what happens next. If you want to find out more about the show, about our characters, or things like that, go check us out on dmstable.com backslash rwa. DM's Table has got information on how to contact us through Twitter or Facebook or things like that. Um, Go check it out, and we'll see you out on the internet. See ya.